Welcome to the Open to Hope show. This show is brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation in partnership with the Compassionate Friends. Well, Heidi, we have got somebody you know on the show today who was one of your students at Columbia, and we like do. you, is an adjunct professor there. She is. Her name is Victoria Grinman. We've known each other for over 10 years. She was one of my very favorite students, and she is a total superstar. And we'll be talking about mindfulness and yoga and what she does today with her clients. Fabulous. That's going to be great. We're talking about living mindfully today. And our second guest is Linda Delvana. And Linda is one of our Hope, Open to Hope authors, has written some fabulous uh, articles. She is, do you, uh, do you consider yourself a widow now? Is that, I just have people tell me that I, they don't like that, but you I'm put it widow. in the name of your book. The name of my book is A Gift of Love, and it was written to fulfill a promise to my late husband. And yeah, I am what I am. Uh -huh. Can't deny it. And, and I've known Linda for a long time through Facebook. And she was on a radio show many, many years ago at the very mm -hmm. beginning. Absolutely. She posts really funny, fun, wonderful pictures that will Thank change you. your energy very quickly in a positive direction. Thank you. Uh, that's neat. And we'll change that uh, living, make you live mindfully and enjoy it, right? You were telling me earlier on that you've really moved into a pattern of enjoying life again after a yes. huge loss. Yes, I have. I'm more comfortable now, and it's taken me quite a while, but yeah, I've moved on. Now, how long has it been? It's 13 years, and I can honestly say I've finally, I finally come into my own. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I wasn't for a long time, I admit it. it. My husband's death really rocked me to my core. And it took a long time, and it took hard work. I love that picture of you and he on the beach. You guys, Thank you. I know, me too. <laughs> we, used really to go to, we used to go to St. Martin and honeymoon there, and we went every year. I mean, I, I was very blessed. We both were. Uh -huh. And I'm very grateful for the time I had with him. Yeah. And you traveled around. He was a hotel, I mean, a toy. Um, My husband hotel. was a, um, an executive vice president for an international toy company. Oh. Mm -hmm. And they had, uh, I used to go to the... Um, Toy Fair held in Hong Kong every, excuse me, every January. I've been to Hong Kong nine times. And you went up wow. the escalators. Yep. <laughs> oh, it was to like, Hollywood Street to it shop It was just antiques. a wonderful experience. <laughs> I'm fun. very, I have yeah. so many fond memories. That's why it took me so long to, uh, we were close. We did everything together. So it took me quite a while to come to terms with it. Yeah. yeah. Well, also, um, in reading your book, uh, some of the things that are diff were difficult for you. He did not have the world's best death, even though he was involved with hospice. He was in a lot of pain, and, well, and it, was, it was difficult. I mean, you, at the ending, where you sat with him, you yeah. know, together, yeah. and, you know, yes. at the end was, was very touching, but going up to that was hell. We had no clue he was sick, and the diagnosis was sudden. And within four months, he was gone. Wow. And the hard part was we had, our, uh, he died on our anniversary. Wow. So it was really, it was kind of, it was hard to take. How old was he? My husband was 64. Wow. When he went. And we had planned to retire together. Yeah, we were going to see the world. Right. We had a bucket list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You come to find out, you know, as time goes on, you realize that, you know, life is, Nothing is forever, yeah. and you, you just learn to go with the flow. You have to. Mm -hmm. so. and, and I know that another uh, aspect of his loss that I think our uh, audience will identify with is the fact that you, um, when his sister got cancer, you realized that oh. you, you had been blaming yourself for the fact that you didn't catch his cancer earlier because the whole medical community, nobody caught it. He just had a cough. And then when his sister uh, died of cancer, you realized that exactly. it wasn't your fault. And I how many people are blaming themselves yeah. and, and not living it's mindfully so, because they're so not It's so normal for that. a widow to do that, but I really did blame myself. We were so close. I couldn't understand how I didn't pick up on this illness. I, I, I really couldn't forgive myself at first. And then it was a very short time later, less than a year later, my sister-in-law got sick. Her husband is a doctor. And when she got sick with cancer and died within four months, all I could think was, well, if my brother-in-law Jimmy couldn't pick up on it, 
How could little Linda, the secretary, pick up? Self-forgiveness is some of the process yeah. that you must go through? Yes, it's, there, it is a process. And it, it, there's no set pattern. There's no... I, I wish life would come with a nice little book of instructions, but it doesn't. And you kind of have to find your own path and, and, and blaze your own trail. The good thing is, especially with online and your organization, there's, there's, everyone is looking to help. Right. There's help out there, and the, the widows are so supportive. Everybody understands, whether you're a new widow or someone up ahead of the, gr the group, there's always someone to reach out to to let you know you're normal. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like reaching out to other widows helped you a lot? Yes. Although when I first started, there weren't any. Yeah. I remember going, to, it was 13 years ago, the internet was pretty new, mm -hmm. and there weren't that many there wasn't anything out there. Yeah. I remember starting my own. But I attracted nice people, mm -hmm. and we all banded together, and we all traded stories, and it, it, it was very positive. That was so great. So you're a writer, and I'm thinking about story, and we're talking about living mindfully. Writers do have to live mindfully, right? Absolutely. In the moment. Mm -hmm. You have to embrace it. Uh -huh. and, and you work with people who write? Yeah, I'm involved with a lot of authors and writers. It's very exciting. This past weekend, I was with Book Expo at the Javits Center. It was very, very exciting. I've had a great week, and now I'm here. Mm -hmm. But I write with uh, writers. We have uh, private writing loops that we participate in online. We also uh, have writers who meet and get together. There's always a workshop or a seminar going on that you can reach out and meet other writers at. And you form a tribe. There's a little group of us always. So, but it's been many years I've been writing, so I have, I have, a, 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 I have connections with writers. And they're good people. They all, everyone who's writing, especially with this mindfulness, you write from the heart, so you connect and you, you join in with that. It, it, it really does, mindfulness is, very much a part of it. Now what about um, getting to that place? Is, is it painful right after a loss? I mean, how, how do you, well, how do you suggest that people be. start writing? Uh, I know? suggest you keep a journal. Uh -huh. I think starting with a journal is the best way. Set aside 10 minutes every day, even if you set a timer, and you just sit and write anything you like. Give yourself permission to write the worst garbage in the world. It's okay. It's, it's just getting through the muck that you have in your brain to bring you down to where you can write. And you'll see as time goes on every day after you make a few notes, a week from now, a month from now, you'll see how far you've come. One day you're just having a bad day. The next time you sit down to write, you'll start to write about, if you start with, I remember, look for um, mm. little inspirational quotes to help you jog you along. Before you know it, you'll be looking out the window and writing about the bird uh, on, the, on the limb looking in your window at you. It can be the sunshine. It can be a cloud in the, in the sky. It can be a laundry list. It can be a grocery list. It can be anything you want it to be. It just gives you a starting point, and from there you write. I like that, a starting point. Like, yeah. I remember. I remember uh, is a very a, good a one. a couple of words, yeah. Do I you have want, a couple more? I want. I want. I don't want. Okay. Um, what's in front of me, what isn't in front of me. My, my mother always said, uh, there's a whole bunch of them. I give prompts sometimes on my Facebook. I have a, a blog, Book or Bust. I give information there, how to get you writing. There's always a, a tip there. And I also have a blog for widows, grief case. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's always something going on at one of the sites. I like that. So writing is a great you. way to live mindfully. Well, Victoria, talk to us about some of the things that you do to help people to get into that moment, to get to deal with their grief, to deal with the issues they have in life. I talk to someone like this person. <laughs> Very inspirational. I'm actually writing, and I will definitely reach Thank out. You. Um, you know, the mindfulness yoga, you know, it's, it's, it's out there. Um, I think when I guest lectured in your class, yeah. I gave a definition of mindfulness um, that I'm borrowing from Amy Saltzman's book. Um, and it's uh, not verbatim, but living 
in the present moment, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, with kindness and curiosity. And I think one of the things I said to the students was, if you are just curious and not kind, then you're just being judgmental. <laughs> you're just being curious. You know, it's like, so you have mm. to be kind. And what does yeah, that I'm mean to curious. be kind? Um, it means with yourself or with another person. It means that whatever it is that you're experiencing or going through, if it's at the beginning of your grief process or towards the middle or, you know, you're, you're continuing um, at a different pace, um, to embrace it. Um, and really understand what mindfulness is mm -hmm. um, and what it's not. So um, a lot of the clients that I have, whether they're kids or adults, we work a lot on understanding what mindfulness is in different aspects, down to when we do breath work, what breath work is and what it is not for that person, mm -hmm. you know, um, what meditation is and what it is not. You know, it's not always stopping the thoughts. Um, oh, I like that to know it's not, not always stopping your thoughts. Oh my gosh, sometimes no. we're trying to, <laughs> because if you've had a loss, you certainly have a, a monkey mind. You know, I'm going to stop you for just a minute because uh, I, for, I forgot to say something. And there's something about you that is very connecting. And, and I think it probably has to do with your grandparents. And mm -hmm. I know that you wanted to dedicate the, the, what you're doing today to your grandparents. And tell us what their name is. And uh, My grandparents, uh, my grandfather is Ruben Rosensvit. And my grandmother is Raisa Lazarovich, and um, they passed away, my uh, grandmother, over 10 years ago now, and my grandfather uh, before that. Um, they were amazing um, human beings, and um, getting choked up. Um, they were my mother's parents, and really have a lot to do with who I am, um, who my brother is, I think, and uh, they were a really big part of our life. I love that. I love that. So thank you for allowing me to do that. <laughs> well, I, she's such an in-depth person, I can tell. That yeah, I love that, too. She had some wonderful. Yeah, thank you. I love with the, um, with the kind piece, you said to be kind with ourselves, too. Because I've noticed a lot when people are grieving, they can be very critical and judgmental with the way that they're doing it with themselves. Mm-hmm. And so the beautiful thing about yoga is uh, it's not really about having a beautiful yoga practice. It's about finding a way to allow yoga to um, kind of uh, show you how to let the grief lead. So, you know... Oh, let the grief lead. I haven't heard that. That's interesting. Yeah, because, you know, what you just did, when we're sad or melancholy, mm -hmm. right? right? But um, we hold negative emotions sadness, uh, grief, and all sorts of parts of our bodies. One of many parts of our bodies is our lungs, right? Mm -hmm. Yet when we cry and we express grief, we are doing it through crying, through breathing, right? Mm -hmm. And when we're sad, we constrict mm -hmm. all of our you know, respiratory ability. And so with yoga, it's finding the practice, the pose that allows you specifically to open up. Open up. Right? So fish pose or, you know, um, just open up in mm -hmm. different restorative um, ways. Do you have anything sitting right here we could do to open up? Breath work. Because mm -hmm. I think the breath is um, ironically <laughs> uh, the only thing that separates us from someone who's not living. Mm -hmm. um, that so is true. Mm -hmm. It is our anchor. Mm -hmm. so that's how we start so. off our writing also. Is it? Well, maybe that's what I'm missing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Assume the position. Assume Inhale. the position. Inhale. <laughs> so what we're going to do is a heart and belly breath that I learned when I was training um, that I love. So you're going to take one hand and place it on your heart. heart. And one hand, place it on your on belly. belly. That's mm -hmm. it. And as my mentor said, switch. Switch, switch. Just kidding. Just place it wherever it feels oh, good. Oh, I'm so spastic. <laughs> you gotta laugh. You have to laugh, right? Of course. You have that to laugh makes you breathe. Be silly. Okay, wait a minute. I gotta find. Okay. Okay. And find a position that feels good for you. Mm -hmm. And I am going to look directly in front of me on something that's not moving. But you might close your eyes if that feels comfortable for you. 
And just begin to breathe in any way that feels comfortable. Do not try to breathe differently. What I like to do is to invite you to pick a color. It could be any color of the rainbow and be very specific about that color. If you pick blue, make sure it's a powder blue or a deep sea blue. Something very, very specific. And on your next inhale, I invite you to imagine that color entering your nose, filling your belly, and as it fills your belly, you're going to relax your belly and let your belly expand. And as you exhale, that color leaving your body, your belly is going to meet the small of your back. You're going to exhale out. Inhale, breathe into your belly. Exhale, breathe out of your belly. Inhale, breathe into your belly. Exhale, breathe out of your belly. On your next inhale, we're going to do something different. You're going to inhale into your belly and into your heart. And exhale out of your heart and out of your belly. One more time. We're going to inhale into our belly and a little bit more into our heart. Exhale out of our heart and out of our belly. Mm. Begin to open your eyes when you feel. Nice. And you can Thank just you do doing. that for even five minutes, right? You can do that for as long as you'd like to do that for. Mm -hmm. It won't hurt you. Yeah, warm up for writing. Oh, <laughs> good warm know. up for writing. Good. <laughs> and and then your uh, talk about these. Your oh, my essential oils. So oh, I essential where do you oils. Get this? So, am I allowed to say? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I just became so interested in essential oils for myself, just like I did with yoga. Um, and then I got trained um, to uh, as a you know certified aromatherapist. And these oils come from a company named DoTerra. Okay. And there's other many big companies. And I um, make my own blends. This one just happens to be a, a respiratory blend called Breathe. The the essential oils come from very grounding elements. They come from plants. They come mm -hmm. from trees, from resins, and depending on what your needs are in your grief process, um, you can really explore and find different essential oils that speak to you. You know, I was telling you earlier that um, Heidi and I interviewed a um, man on the show who is a uh, physician, and he said that when his son was killed, he went to essential oil. He said he tried everything and he went to essential oils. And he, his comment was, I said, well, did it really help you? You know, and he said, it wasn't like, whoa, you know, I'm fine now. <laughs> he said, but it, it relaxed me. He said, I was able to sleep a little bit better. I, I wasn't as rattled, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. I'm thinking this along with the breath work could be pretty amazing. Transformative, yeah. Yeah. transformative. Yeah, yeah. So. And, you know, children, um, teens, I work with adults now who I, you know, use aromatherapy with in different ways. And so um, I think the most important thing, and it's something that you taught me many years ago, which is just a very individualized approach to treatment. Mm -hmm. So knowing what you need mm -hmm. and how to get your needs. And coming from where you are in your life. I think, I think that's one thing when we're thinking about living mindfully. I think we really have to see where everybody's coming from individually, you know, what, what new things can you learn, but what things can you bring with you, mm -hmm. you know, from, the, from uh, your past experience. Well, when we're, we're working with people, we need to find out what's working for them and do more of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Do more of what works. Right. And I think that, you know, we were discussing this on the way here with, with my mother. It's how do you... Um, how do you do that, right? Because everyone wants, you know, who, who doesn't want to feel better? Mm -hmm. um, 
And I think something she mentioned that I will always take away with me is educating yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not just about doing a pose, for example, or doing the breath work. It's about finding that space within you that feels like it's holding that grief and that sadness. And instead of placing it under the rug and saying it's not there, embracing it and saying, this is where I am today. And right. let me breathe into that right. space and create some more space. I agree. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So, um, you know, if people can find someone who they trust, a practitioner or, you know, a, you know a, some sort of healer, anything that works for them. It doesn't have to be, That's you right. know, a, uh, you know, a licensed clinical social worker or a psychologist. It, it can, can be, be a writer. It could be a writer. A friend. Yeah. yeah. I like the idea of what you're, you're saying, and I also like therapy counselors. I love my therapist. Yes. <laughs> Shout out. Shout, Shout out, out to I, Donna. Me too. Shout out to I to love it. Too. All right. Well, well what, you're all, what you're saying, too, about living your therapist is, uh, I and Adi and I have talked about this before, if you are going to do a therapist and it's not working for you and you're new into the grief process, find a fit. Absolutely. Keep Shop searching. Around. Mm -hmm. That's right. Keep searching. Yep. I mm -hmm. agree, Linda. I don't think enough can be said about that. I, no. I hear people Keep say searching. they don't like their therapist, and I'm like, why are you staying with them? Exactly. If, mm -hmm. if, you, if you really I can't. big search. Mm -hmm. I'm if it's not pleased. working for yeah. you, why, why are you staying with it? I love know? my mm -hmm. therapist. Yeah. I don't care who knows it. I, yeah. I'm very fond of her. Yeah. Uh -huh. I couldn't see her this week because I was sick, but I can't wait to see her again. She yeah. called to see how I was. Uh huh. That's a great fit. It's a great feeling. <laughs> yeah. Somebody cares. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's important to find good fits. As you said, Heidi, it's important to find out what has been working and keep yeah. doing more of it and, you know, support that. And also to find new activities mm -hmm. and, and new things and different, like coming on television. Right, and, right. <laughs> taking well, a risk. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. my grandson told me? He told me that I... Um, I, you know, I've been doing some of these, you know, TV and things, and I was talking to him about it, and he said, Grandma, you should be scared every once a day. It's good for you. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Cute. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> He's probably right. That's what I was saying, the Grandma Moses thing to you. It's scary to put yourself out there, isn't yeah. it? it? I is. know you do workshops. I had to step I, out of my comfort zone yeah. to come here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you were saying that you really, you know, it's taken you a while to step into it's your world. It's taken me 13 years. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had asked me, gee, why we didn't get together sooner. Yeah. I wasn't ready. I couldn't put myself out there. I just wasn't ready. And I ready. think it's good for people to hear that. Yeah. I mean, I worked with 9-11 widows for 10 years, and it took them seven years, most of them, to fully feel comfortable in their new identity. Right. It takes a long time. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, you have to get comfortable with the new you. Right, exactly. There's yeah. such a change going on, and while it's happening, you're not it's a part of you have to let go yeah. and it's so hard you you just want to hold on to it because you don't want to let go it's all those memories and you're building and who you things. were yep. you have to let go of that person right. I'm not that person anymore right. so Linda you've got some wonderful articles on open to hope people can come and find you at Linda Thank Del you. Donna and you are tell us about your book where to get it a widow's journey well um, my book is available uh, wherever you purchase your 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 books, it's available at Amazon. It's at Barnes and Noble. It's online. It's anywhere you want to great, buy your book. Great. You just ask for it. And um, Victoria, you're going to get married. Is that right? I am. How yeah. exciting! So I just exciting. noticed. Congratulations! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We were looking at your ring. It's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> he made it. Oh, oh my it's God! Gorgeous. Him and his father. Oh, oh, thank you. Right. What's his name? His name is Daniel. Hey, Daniel. <laughs> Fantastic. You're getting a thank great you. woman. Well, thank you guys for being on the show thank today. Thank you so it's much for really having great. me. I'm honored. And we're going to end the show by hearing Bar Scott. Yeah. And she is going to be singing. And uh, she's going to be singing more. And Bar writes her own music. Fabulous. And she dedicates her work to her son, Forrest. Yeah, she's got a beautiful voice. She does. And so now we're going to hear Bar sing more. And we want to thank you for watching the show today. And we want to remind you, as always, that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own. And God bless. More than the moonlight on the lake Or water on my skin I love you more